Well, I gotta be really careful about not touching the tank with this. I gotta be careful when I'm putting on the positive. Whoa! See how close I am? Whoa! Whew! <laughs> I got my iced coffee here on a winter day. Real smart, right? Last time that I was doing on this bike, I thought that I had some wiring issues. Talking to GS Resources and talking to my uncle, I ended up figuring out it was the battery, so I ended up picking up. Extreme Extended Life AGM, maintenance free. 30 year old bikes have these connectors that are just old and they're called bullet style connectors. This type, it's got a female and a male and it just goes right in. I could find you a male. I don't see a male around. All I got is females. Mm. Basically one end would go right inside there and it would connect. You can see it's all kind of black and gross inside there. So I replaced them. So these aren't the best, but they work. And they work actually better if you solder a little bit of the wire lead. And I added a little bit of dielectric grease. Now this stuff's good for electronics, always good to put on your electric connectors. Connectors are your enemy. It already had the Honda regulator upgrade. So the wires that come out of this thing, there's a green wire that is gonna be your ground. There's a red wire and a black wire. The red wire is your power. And the black wire is called, is a meter wire. Basically what that does is it reads the volts on whatever it's connected to and it tells the bike, tells the regulator, whether or not it needs to be charged more or not. Well, mine was connected to the rear brake sensor. And after reading on GS Resources and talking to my uncle, it come to realize that that gives a, the bike a false reading. So my battery was being overcharged. It was only given a 10 volt charge. And there's also three yellow wires. There's three wires that come out of there in this little pack here. One wire for each coil. Three yellow wires coming out of the engine. Two of them connect to the regulator, and one yellow wire runs all the way up to this. One, each yellow wire is connected to a coil. If this shuts off one of the coils, it tells the bike that it does not need all three coils to charge the bike if the headlight's off because it's not drawing power from the battery. The bike's running right now because I'm warming it up, but just so you can see how this works right here, the headlights, it's on off right now, and I turn it on. You can obviously see that the headlight works off and on. Same thing with the dash lights, same thing with the tail light. Now, one of the things that people do is they disconnect that yellow wire running up to that switch and they hardwire all three to all three. So your headlights are running full time and your bike's charging correctly. I didn't do that yet because I figured it wasn't drawing power. I wasn't getting a, a, a less charge. I was getting too much of a charge. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that feature on. It's a neat little trick when I'm riding with someone else. There's one green wire coming out of here. That is your ground. So I took that green wire, put a connector on it, and attached it to a ground lead. Power goes straight into the wire harness. And this is your bullet style connector, if you can see this. That's what a bullet style connector looks like. You unplug it like this. I put some dielectric grease and I left that there for now. Because again, I wasn't having problems drawing power, I was having too much power. So I know since I did these, I should have done this, but for now I'm gonna leave it because I just wanna get the bike going. This is your black wire, the meter. Now, it used to be connected to the brake sensor, but now I put a little connector on it so I can put this on the positive terminal because it's gonna read directly from the battery. In theory, some people on GS Resources say that it's gonna draw power from the battery, but we'll take a look and we'll see over time. We'll see how that works. I added an extra ground. What I did was I grinded down the metal here and then I placed a just a wire with two different leads on it. And then I could just bolt it to that ground and then bolt this to the negative battery just to get a little more solid of a ground. In theory, who knows if that's gonna work, but we'll give it a try, see if my bike goes well. This wiring is not going to look like this forever. I do have a little boot that I'm going to go ahead and scoop all this in. Stuff it like an omelet. This needs to come out of here. Stuff it like a burrito. Carnitas burrito. 
like a Moses Tacos Carnitas Burrito. Gotta stuff that fish. Buche, mm. lengua, mm. cabeza, tripas, mm. carne asadas, mm. chorizo, mm. Bo uh, pollo, mm. también. <laughs> I speak Spanish too. So a couple years and uh, school teaches you. Dun, da, da. Sealed. Voila, there you are. Let's get the new bolts. Two nuts and two bolts. Mm. This goes inside underneath with the little tabs down there. And then these bolts just screw right in. So let's, whoa, let's go ahead and put those in. There we go. I should have put this in before I put the battery in, but that's okay. Dielectric grease, let's do it up. Give me some of the juice, let's do it up. Okay, here we go. Put a little bit on here. Okay, just gonna rub that in. it on here, put that in, and I know that negative terminal already has some, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone for now, and let's get it in there. Oh, it did catch, alright, so that caught, now let's put our positive lead on, on that little connector. So I got a shorter one. That way I don't have sparks. Okay, so I got it on, I, I think. Yep. I got it on. Let's try this thing. Let's see if it starts. Lights turn on. turns out on each screw on the air pilot and three quarters to seven eighths turn on the, on the fuel pilot. I'm not going to ever mess with these again, but I'll tune these up uh, later on once I actually do a carb seat. Got that Kirker exhaust. You hear it backfiring a little bit. Now that backfire, I'm not too sure what is. I don't know if you guys on GS Resources want to help me out with that one, but let's get a reading on this while the bike's running. Well, it's running right there. 16 volts might be overcharging. Not too sure. Let's see what it reads when it's off now. 13.5. Now let's just turn the ignition on. Twelve point nine when you just when the ignition's on. Now let's turn the headlights on. Twelve point three with the headlights on. Now let's run the bike with the headlights on. Sixteen point seven. That does seem kind of high. We'll have to see what where we get with that. 